Welcome back to the Build Day Live here at Supermicro. Uh, joining me for this session, Arun Kaluri. Arun, tell us uh, what it is that you do with uh, Supermicro and what we're going to talk about. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm responsible for um, the remote management software aspects of what we call business systems management uh, software uh, products at Supermicro. And uh, so basically what we do is um, we have a Supermicro has a, a wide variety of customers, different market segments, uh, all the way from retail to hyperscalers. And each of these market segments uh, have different needs to manage mm -hmm. the servers in their deployments. So our products go into managing servers through the life cycle of the uh, products uh, inside the data centers. And so this is scales of a, a, a few servers, so maybe a dozen servers, yes, up, up it, to thousands? It could range from well, one server, two servers, to all the way to hundreds of thousands of servers. So, so we have customers managing supermicro servers um, in, in tens of thousands, and even in some cases, uh, we have uh, they they go into even six digit numbers. Right. That's, yes. that's kind of crazy. It's crazy numbers, but yes, but uh, that's the reality of today. And uh, in in a lot of uh, large data centers, um, especially uh, large enterprises, big data companies, and public right. cloud data right. centers. And so, what's the core? management product you have a server manager pr product that is the core of this we have several products um, so one product definitely is our supermicro uh, server manager in short uh, abbreviated as ssm so ssm is a uh, remote uh, web-based uh, server management product uh, that actually goes and manages uh, servers uh, for all our enterprises and uh, large data centers one of the things I want to hit is, is you say remote and web based, but it's it's installed on premises. It is installed but it on is, premises. It is a server that's installed on premises that then you you don't have to sit on the console of it. You can use a web browser to then manage that. Manage right. manage multiple servers and all the the health of all the servers uh, and the asset information and the management capabilities, including the firmware management. Everything can be done through one single uh, web UI interface. And that there was kind of three ways of thinking about the bits of it. There was the, the sort of inventory information of what servers have I got and what hardware's inside them. That's right. That's right, all the serial numbers and everything, uh, all the asset information. And of course, the, the second aspect is that health information. So again, what components are healthy? And the third aspect is um, the firmware management. Um, so of course, uh, the, there's always new releases of this firmware and they need to be uh, updated, upgraded and uh, all of that could be managed from a single console. As I've been going through some of the uh, vSAN deployment at the moment, it's, I think I need SSN deployed out so that I can update the firmware to get the vSAN compatible firmware on my controllers. That so is that's, right. That's the kind of behavior that we'd need to have. Absolutely, and, because, and, and since you mentioned vSAN, um, so uh, all our SSM also has plugins that actually go and integrate into the vCenter. So mm -hmm. if you're managing a vSAN type of a uh, solution, um, so there are RESTful APIs on the SSM that goes and uh, and that are integrated into the plugins that sit into the vCenter uh, uh, software right. console. So we can see yes. visibility of it. Visibility of everything from the vCenter, yes. And, right. yeah. and you said there was a RESTful API in there. Is that a public API? Uh, can I integrate that into the rest of my environment? Absolutely. That's a public API and uh, uh, they can be integrated into your existing infrastructure. So this is the beauty about SSM. Not only can it be used as a single console, but say um, you want to integrate into your own orchestration or management software, you can take those APIs and integrate into your existing uh, infrastructure software. And the other interesting place of integration <coughs> is, is Redfish as a replacement for IPMI or a proprietary management tool. Can you talk us a little bit through what the strategy is around Redfish? Absolutely. So Redfish uh, was publicly released around 2015, and Supermicro was, uh, uh, you know, it came out with its uh, support for Redfish. It was the first to come out in the in the market with a uh, with a officially available firmware with Redfish API support, and um, and. Uh, what we have done with uh, with that is we are still using IPMI, but uh, because there is some legacy customers who still use IPMI, but also for the new modern data centers, uh, we have these RESTful APIs uh, in the form of Redfish standardized Redfish APIs. Um, so again, with the Redfish APIs, you can just 
integrate uh, the server management right into your infrastructure management software uh, without having to use any of those uh, vendor tools. So basically, you can avoid any CLI-based tools or anything that's coming from the vendor. Any, any janky and integration between the various parts. It's various like parts. API call. Exactly, and you can write right away integrate into your infrastructure. So now that's about integrating at a system level. But if you are trying to use a rack as a unit and you want to uh, manage racks, so you can also use our RESTful APIs through our pod manager. Uh, so we have our rack skill design based pod manager. Which that has a, now this is targeted rather than a, at a conventional enterprise. This is more at the, the cloud scale. This is scale. more at a cloud scale hyperscaler level. Presumably also things like hyper. Um, the uh, high performance compute environments where there's large numbers of nodes and they scale by six racks together is what you deploy. Absolutely. So even for the HPC, you can definitely use that, that type of a technology. Uh, but for example, for a HPC, they call it, they have something called a cluster management software mm -hmm. yeah. that's kind of doing uh, similar, similar things. things. Yeah, so definitely there's there's a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, synergies around there. But circling back to the pod manager, which is aimed at the, the hyperconverged, that's providing a, a, a Redfish type. Is it a, an actual Redfish API? or is it, is, it is a Redfish API right. coming out. So so when we look at it as a system, we are looking at it at a system level, but when you're looking at a rack level, so then you're talking about storage, network, uh, compute, all of them being yeah. part of this whole pod management oh, at a rack level. Object that I have an API. Thing. Exactly. And you take resources from a compute um, and you take a storage from a different different box, combine them as a, as a resource, as a logical resource, and, and expose that, all that information through Redfish API. So we've seen things like the, the ultra dense blade servers would be providing the compute and the disaggregated storage that we've seen is, would, might be providing this, the storage for it. And these things are being integrated together. Integrated to a software management. software interface and that's all yeah. Redfish is doing. And of course, we also heard of, about the Supermicro's networking portfolio, which I was unaware of before this event. That also, I understand, is being integrated into... Into the, the Rackscale design the and everything is managed through Redfish APIs. That's really nice. Yeah. Thanks. So 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 if you kind of take a rack as a unit level, of course there will be a network compute storage, everything, um, and all of the and, and a fabric interconnects uh, yeah. that's actually connecting the compute storage in a disaggregated fashion. And, and that's, you that's can compose everything. Uh, you can compose a resource through all these the, uh, uh, disaggregated resources, nice. and then uh, and then go ahead and invoke a. Uh, your Redfish APIs and uh, and uh, do bare metal orchestration and so forth. So you could instantiate you know, 100 servers off, off a couple of API calls and then oh, half an hour later you could decommission the whole lot because the job is complete. Exactly. And, and, and when the job is done, you just release everything back into the pool and uh, uh, make them ready for the next uh, uh, task. There's some serious engineering underneath there. There is. There's a lot of work that's going beneath and so our teams have been working for the last couple of years in perfecting this. Yeah. Now the other management tool we talked about a little was the power management. There's a, a yeah. cool power management tool. So besides the uh, uh, Supermicro Server Manager, we also have a Supermicro Power Manager. So this is based, up, uh, under, uh, based on Intel DCM. So because we use uh, underlying Intel DCM, um, uh, we can we can not only manage super microservice, but we can also manage uh, other servers uh, uh, as well. Um, so now uh, it has a lot more depth in the way it can manage the power. So for example, you can actually throttle the power all the way not uh, from system level to a CPU to a memory. So and sub components within the sub components. System you can to you have that level of granularity. You can have some advanced policies where based on uh, the difference between the inlet and outlet temperatures, you can manage the power. So yeah. there's a lot of cool features that you could do to manage and control the power uh, so at, at a data center level. If you were doing something like trying to use free air cooling rather than use your chillers, you could have a, an environment that is going to gracefully degrade as the free air starts to um, be less efficient and, and then because you're going to spend more money on on the chillers you may want to degrade a little performance as you're getting across a knee and then when it's the free air is, is temperature is getting much less efficient then you switch the chillers on and automatically your performance comes that's back exactly up. the point because sometimes uh, upgrading the infrastructure at the chillers level and everything it, 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 it's, it's a more uh, it's a lot of capital. Expense, uh, uh, affair so that's one of the reasons why we can manage the power at the server level, the systems level at more granular level. Then. 
Yeah. And, and get a, a graceful degrade rather than on a system that, that's intolerant of CPU yeah. um, de degradation, you can say, well, maybe I'm going to degrade the, um, the memory performance because c CPU is more important. Or correct, vice correct. Versa. Yeah, no. depending upon your application, you, you, well can you, know yeah, you can really manage the components power. And I, w I would think this is very exciting to the hyperscale vendors who are running a single application across 5,000 servers. That's a right. little less so to an enterprise customer who's running 5,000 applications across 400 servers. That's absolutely right. And, and, and a lot of times, even in, uh, uh, in a cloud or a colo kind of a environment, you have uh, a certain uh, power limits. Uh, power right. uh, to, so to a, the a tenant racks. who's in there would, would be limited to a, a certain amperage into each rack. Into each rack. And, and you want to really have that control without but you want to get all the, the performance, performance you can exactly. get out yeah, of that, exactly. that money. Right. And then underlying this, there are some more detailed um, management products rather than these, these overarching consoles. You also have more. Yeah. So underlying our SSM, we also have a tool called the Supermicro Update Manager. So this is a CLI tool uh, that's used to, um, again, uh, update the firmware, uh, everything in a CLI, uh, right. using the CLI interface. Uh, a lot of our customers still love CLI interface. Yeah. Uh, though we have APIs, we have web UIs. Again, it depends upon customer to customer needs, and that's where where the super micro value is. Like we do have different products for different customer needs, and uh, this CLI tool allows them to update the firmware, um, and also it it can pull out all the asset information. Right. Um, you can update the firmware again. Um, across multiple servers at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just one server. So it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can you can kick off a firmware update process on thousand servers at the same time. All right. Yeah. Okay. So cool. now we hit all of the, the highlights of the system management. System management yeah. So be, be, yeah. Beyond that, uh, we also have some legacy tools based on IPMI, such as IPMI View, mm -hmm. IPMI CFG. So again, we have the intention to support these tools as long as our customers custom are still they, you know are using IPMI um, so again these are some of the popular tools um, we have been supporting for more than a decade and we, we continue to uh, do that for the customers and that's another beauty about our tools is the support levels um, they go pretty long because you have these large customers who've made a huge investment in super micro hardware exactly. and methodologies around it you don't want to push them that you, you have to change the methodology that you've been using for the last five years last five years and, and also like our customers upgrade from generation to generation on the hardware products so the mm -hmm. same tools they expect the same tools to work across multiple generations mm -hmm. of their products um, so uh, and we make sure that the same tools are compatible across multiple generations of uh, our x86 uh, product lines, uh, not only x86, um, even some of the product lines okay. that we are working through. Right. Well, so, all right. Thank you very much for joining me here. Absolutely. And thank you for having me. Pleasure. And thank you for joining us on this video. Stay tuned for more of the Build Day Live videos from Supermicro.